Hi, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to take what we did in the previous videos, which dealt with strings. And the example we used, which is still on screen in Python, let's just get rid of all our crazy experiments there. It was hello world. OK, so that's a string. We established the fact that that string is made from a um, a series of characters or if you like a sequence of characters okay so just as a quick reminder there are two things we can do we can um, create a loop um, using an index value as we did before and we go up to I think it's 11 and then we just simply print s square bracket the index value okay so that's a, a mechanism we looked at in one of the previous videos let's just quickly update that and um, run it so you can see and it takes each letter and displays it in a sequence so that's one way of doing it but what you'll notice also about python is that um, there's another way of doing exactly the same thing instead of using indexes because a string because of the idea that a string is essentially a collection let's just go back to the example we had so before i introduce lists here because it, these are indexed you can treat this almost like a list structure now what does that mean but this this is a bridging concept this is a concept that will lead you to the next step right so that's one way of doing it let's get rid of that and let's say that we just want ch which i'm going to say is a character and all i'm going to do is i'm going to do that in my loop i need to explain that to you and then in here i'm going to print this ch now what, what's going on in that loop it looks a hell of a lot simpler and clearer right what it does is it is saying s i'm assuming you realize it's like a list each position each character has an index position this clever piece of code doesn't need you to tell me the index. It will select each item, pop it into here, and then you'll display it. So we don't even have to use indexes here in this particular moment. Right, so let's run that and see how that works. So this is a very neat little feature. If it works, let's run it. And it did exactly the same thing. So look at that code, right, side by side. Let's just undo so we get our other code back. Let's pop it underneath. So instead of an index and a range in the first loop and, and just an upper number value, and then you use that simply to grab a number and say to the string, I want it at zero, I want it at one, I want it at two, I want it at three, which was the mechanism being used here. This mechanism is even faster. It treats S as if you are looking at it like this okay it treats s as if you've got this h e l comma 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 it all it treats it in a way like this so when you say give me each character it just picks each one now i've drawn it deliberately to look like a list but it's not a list but it's like it a list it's very similar okay so hold that thought in your mind and hold that very clever way of doing it and let's shift ground a bit let's uh, introduce a list of numbers right um, zero one two uh, let's let's pick two three five seven nine ten 11 do you know what numbers are popping up on screen um can you spot any pattern to this number sequence here are any of these numbers divisible by anything other than one and themselves no they're not so they're they are if you like what you might call prime numbers okay um but it doesn't really matter the point is there's a list of numbers watch what happens if i do this right let's ignore well we can use both mechanisms so first of all um, we could use this mechanism here, right? So we've got a range. Let's count how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what happens if I pop an eight in there? And instead of S, I say to L, this thing here, 
right? I'm going to call it L. Again, my names are useless. They're too brief. And uh, I don't want you to encourage <laughs> to use those. I want you to use better names than I have. I'm going to comment that out, right? And comment that out for the time being, because we're only interested in this here. But we're using the same looping mechanism. This is going to give me an index value up to eight. I'm going to take the index value and I'm going to select an item. Does that work? And let's talk about how and why it works in a second. Let's make sure there's no error in my code. Um, and let's run it and see what it shows me. Oh, it seemed very happy with that. So what's going on here? You might say to me, hang on, that's got a square bracket and commas. This is just a string. From Python's point of view, it treats them in very similar ways. And that's very useful to you. Let's get this scribble out of the way and uh, just have a look at the code. When you have a list, I've called it L, and I've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and 13, just for the sake of it indexes that from 0, 1 to the every position, every every number between the commas has an index. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. You say to me that's very similar to a string and I would say absolutely it's very similar to a string and it makes gives you very powerful features here and very useful features. Let's say that I want to select that one number there. Right, that's at index 4. Let's just see how to do that. Let's get rid of that comment. Get rid of that loop, sorry. Right, and we'll come back to that in a minute. What happens if I just have a single print statement? Right, open close bracket, L square bracket, and we said we were interested in number five. So that's at index four. What happens if I just put a four inside a square bracket in that way there? Right, so let's just write it here, what we're doing. To, we are suggesting that that should give me that five back, okay? It's a very good exercise actually one of the worksheets that gets you to understand this is a good test what do we expect do we expect that five to appear or it's going to do something else who knows let's have a look it gives me five let's change that number to uh, index position five count before i run this and tell me what you think it's going to create should i think give you seven right so let's run it and it gives you seven so here we have two very, very similar looking concepts. This is actually technically a list. It's a sequence of numbers, right? And Python is powerful enough to actually use similar mechanisms of how it deals with a string, which is a sequence of characters. So let's test that through, let's get rid of that. Let's have a look at this one down here, which we used for our string, okay? Um, let's run that and just remind us what that did and then let's see how we can adapt that for this list right so run main and it crashed it didn't like that what did I do wrong character oh, because I've commented out s it doesn't know what s is okay my fault let's um let's run that again right um, run file a script and let's run that main method and there we go it's taken each character and displayed it now, can I do something similar with this? What happens if I replace S with L, which is my list, and I just keep CH, doesn't matter. I can use NMBR because it says number, right? And let's copy that into, oops, let's copy that into here, right? And what do we expect is gonna happen here? Have a guess before I run it. So let's build it, make sure I haven't got any typos here at all. Um, and run it and look what it's done exactly the same as we had with the string it's gone through that list taken each character and displayed it the reason I didn't use 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 is I wanted you to see that these numbers are the numbers sitting inside the list not the index value so that is a very very powerful thing to be able to do you don't even have to have a range statement here. You don't have to have an index if you're trying to get through, just going through every single one and doing some kind of calculation. Python allows these simpler, neater ways of doing stuff to allow you to simplify your code and speed up the problem solving that you're, you're trying to do.
So I'm going to stop this video here and we are going to move on to another one.